Hello and welcome back to Aspen Grove Adventures. My name is Michelle and today we're doing things a little bit differently. If you watched last week's video, you know that um, the last four videos or so of this summer route that we were on, I did not really film well, like with the intention of making a good narrative because things just went a little bit crazy. And so I got footage, but we are here at the editing stage kind of narrating what was going on because I did not do a good job in the moment. Um, this video is about getting kicked out of Yellowstone National Park. We were in Yellowstone on the day it flooded, on the day they evacuated the park. And I know that a good YouTuber would have gotten this video up weeks ago. This is probably going up about two months after the whole thing went down, but I had a schedule and I stuck to my schedule of uploading rather than jumping the gun and getting this video out ahead of time. So hopefully you're interested in our experience. I know that most people have moved on from this. The park did a great job of getting itself back up and running as best as they could, um, which is awesome. But this is just our experience uh, in the park on the day, getting information in bits and pieces. And I thought I'd walk you guys through it um, with the little bit of information that I filmed, a little bit of footage that I filmed. Today and not tomorrow, there's no time to borrow. Today is a good day to live. So about midday um, on June 14th, the day that it flooded, we were in the lower loop. We were planning on doing the whole loop. Um, and we were literally about as far away as you could get from our RV and our dogs when we realized that something was going on. Our dogs were at Fishing Bridge Campground in the RV. We were at the Norris Canyon, which is on the lower loop direct opposites from one another, basically. Um, and that's where we met a ranger who kind of told us that um, things things were closing, they had closed the gates in. We'll just, so then was the park gonna be open tomorrow or is it kind of maybe iffy? If you were already outside of the park, you won't be able to get back in until Thursday. They're gonna do, they're determining that they're gonna have all that cleaned up by Thursday? No, that's just determining, this is probably gonna be closed for at least a week. Oh, okay. Because this is, they have to redo structure assessments, road yeah. assessments, all that. But um, Thursday is kind of more for the Southern area. So we will be able to get in Becky in here? Maybe. Um, if we're out of the park? Yeah, if you're out of the park, the minimum is Thursday morning but that could change. Okay. But this right. may be closed tomorrow. That could close later today. Mm -hmm. Okay. So people couldn't get to like Old Faithful. Yeah. Um, and at this point we had no idea that our campground, like what was gonna go with, on with our campground and we were like, maybe we can just hunker down in the park until after the flooding is over, if the flooding's not gonna affect where we are. Um, it doesn't sound like Fishing Bridge was in too much danger of actually getting us kicked out. Yeah. Um, but it definitely sounds like we might be stuck in fishing gauge for a while. Yeah, we won't be able to go many places. Um, so, it's interesting that she said that Old Faithful might be closing even later today. Even later today. Like we might... Not be able to get out of the park that way. Not just not out of the park, that's our way back to our campground. Well, we have to get back to our campground no matter what, and I think we should probably start heading that way. Maybe we stop at Old Faithful because that's the lower part of the pop spot where she said it can close, and maybe we'll see Old Faithful. And then head back to Fishing Bridge and talk to them and be like, can we extend? Because what if we can't get out? I mean, it seems like at this point we run so the risk. So basically, of... the big the big things between us and our campground that we really wanted to see today was Grand, Grand Prismatic and Old Faithful, right? Yeah. And those are and those are both in areas that might be closing. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's think about it. And... All right. Yeah. 
I mean, I feel like we're already late enough in the day where we could get back to the RV, hitch up, and not be able to get out of the park. So after talking it through with the information that we got from the ranger at Norris Canyon, which was, she only had the latest up-to-date information and it was early on in the day and we had no idea what was going to end up happening. Um, we were like, let's go back to the RV. Unfortunately, on the second half of the loop that we were going to do was the Grand Prismatic Springs and Old Faithful. And we were kind of thinking, like, maybe we can stop and see those things on our way back to the dogs. And when we get back to the dogs, we will ask the campground, can we stay? Um, can we extend our can we extend our stay? Because if they've closed people coming in, um, that means that people who would be arriving aren't arriving. So there should be RV spots available to us. Um, so that was kind of the plan. And then the bison blew that plan out of the water. Uh, turns out the bison knew that the park was flooding, and so they all came up to the roads. We didn't learn th why they were on the roads until later, but that's why. And we proceeded to spend the next three hours sitting in, I think we hit three or four bison jams and a mudslide that they had to clear. Um, and that got us to the Old Faithful Inn. I don't know if you're able, but you might want to open your window and put your camera out that way. At the flooding river. Yeah, you can totally tell that it has like creeped up the banks. Cause like over there, you could see the cutoff of where the river meets the ground normally. Mm -hmm. And then over here, it is like up on the banks of the hill. Yeah, my camera is definitely not gonna pick it up. But behind those trees is a big truck. And we've seen maybe two loaders now, three loaders now, just dumping mud or dirt or something into the big truck. And we saw one truck drive away already. We saw one truck drive away already. I think there was a mudslide and they're clearing it away so that we can go. Thank, Thank you. you! See, in California, we'd be afraid there was a brush fire, and that's why they closed down the road. <laughs> because of the smoke in here. Or the steaming. I'd rather hit bison traffic than, um, mudslide. Oh, did you see the baby running? Oh, look at that. <laughs> One of them's rolling over <laughs> during the scout. This guy's right on the road. There's like a mama and a baby in the middle. In the middle. And they're the only ones left on this side. Except for way oh, up wait. there. Way up there, there's more up there in, in front of us. Otherwise, the cars in front of them would have gone already. Oh, yeah, there's, there's the most of the herd is up there in yeah. front of. But I think they're starting to straggle because they're like, I, I mean, they're I, getting tired. They've yeah, been walking think, for two hours. Right. I don't think bison go this long without eating, like truly eating. Yeah. I mean, at least we've been sitting in wheels for two hours. Right. It's been annoying, but at least we haven't walked for two hours. Bye guys. You were fun for the first 30 minutes. You weren't for the last hour and a half. I promise you, 145. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't rear in these guys. Just stuck in traffic again. So after sitting in Bison Jams for hours, we finally arrived at the Old Faithful Village and it was a ghost town. It was creepy how empty it was. This is the biggest, most, uh, like, this is the biggest attraction in the park. This is where most people go. People go to Yellowstone and they do stuff, but they don't miss Old Faithful. Like, this is the one thing that you have to do in Yellowstone and the parking lot was maybe 10% full. It was creepy. They had closed um, the the gift shop. They had closed the like the canteen restaurant. They had closed the um, 
the general store. They had closed the uh, like interactive museum area. Basically, the only things that were open were the gas station and the um, ranger station. So I went into the ranger station and talked to the ranger a little bit, and this is where we learned that we were definitely not going to be able to hunker down and stay in the park. He was like, you have to get out. You have to get out now. By the way, the road that you are planning on taking out may or may not flood. It's okay, I'm... I'm about to cry, and I should have been filming, but whatever. I'm not that good of a YouTuber, and I don't care. <laughs> well, um, you told me what you're about to tell me, so go ahead. So I go in, um, and I'm in line. I'm like about to ask the ranger. I don't know what I have already told the vlog, and I will later on go back and talk to you guys to fill you in on stuff I've forgotten. But um, <sighs> the park is flooding, and they're emptying it out, and um, there's like two states worth of human beings that need to get out of the park tonight, which is ridiculous because it's gorgeous out there. Um, <laughs> so I go in and I ask them, I'm like, so we have reservations at Fishing Bridge. We're staying there tonight. We have plans to be going to West KOA tomorrow or the West Yellowstone to the KOA tomorrow. Um, uh, but we've heard that the road might be flooded and we might not be able to get out tomorrow. And he's like, that's correct. And also when you get back over to Fishing Bridge, they are going to tell you to get out. <laughs> um, so, uh, I was like, oh, okay, all right. Um, well, what do we do? Because there, I mean, no way is there going to be a KOA of, available to us tonight. Everyone is getting out of the park. I've, I'm sure that people have already went and taken all the spots. So, I am. Um, he he gave me a bunch of information. Um, the the local fairgrounds are opening themselves up to as many RVs who can fit and just, you know, helping basically evacuate the park tonight. Uh, and so I was getting really stressed out because I was like, oh, I got a stomach ache. I don't feel good. Um, so I come back out to the truck and this glorious man has done the most glorious thing. And he has called the KOA where we have reservations for tomorrow. And they have a spot for us tonight. So we have a spot tonight. Uh, it is already 6 p.m. I'm glad I packed a picnic dinner because at some point we're probably gonna wanna eat that while we drive. Um, and we have to go pick up, it's gonna be an hour to get us back to the RV. And we have to pick up the RV and get ourselves over to West KOA. Uh, apparently this is national news. Um, a woman was saying her family in Pennsylvania has texted her. Uh, the guy, the park ranger who was, I talked to before he was talking to me, he was talking to other people. And these people were kind of ridiculous. Like they were like trying to argue with him and like fight back. And I'm like, dude, you can't fight back with nature. This is just the way it is. And he, and he, so they're like, well, we didn't know about this, blah, 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 blah. I didn't know. And he goes, the Washington Post is covering it. It's national news that, well, Yellowstone is closing. So I'm actually currently very surprised we have not heard from uh, mostly Matt's mom or any other family members about this. Um, he did also warn us that uh, the bison have realized the rivers are flooding. So they've all hit the roads, which we've already learned today, if you've been following along on in this video. Um, and so we're bound to hit more bison on the way back out again. So it could be 10 o'clock before we get to our RV site. I don't know, but it is what it is. I hope it's not because it's supposed to start raining around, around nine o'clock again. Yeah. So we're just gonna power through. We're gonna get this done somehow. I wish that we hadn't hit so many bison traffic already because we would have, you know, had a couple hours jump on this, but it is what it is. I'm, like the sad part that's really unfortunate about this whole thing is we, we leave on Friday to go up to Glacier and we can't get back in until like Thursday night, if then. So we don't get to see Old Faithful or the Grand Prismatic Spring, which are like two of the biggest things that you're supposed to see at Yellowstone. So that's a bummer, um, but we have a good story to tell and we, uh, we'll have to come back. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's probably a handful of RVs that work, people work here, so they haven't gotten out. <laughs> it's dead. Oh, yeah, this is yes, yes. <sighs> Yep, he's, he's hitching himself up. Wow. 
It's probably rare to see fishing British camper on this empty. Sure <laughs> is. So we were able to get back to the RV and found out we were getting kicked out. We got back to the RV much later than we had planned. Luckily I had packed a picnic dinner so we were able to eat kind of as we drove because I have no idea when we would have eaten. We got this RV packed up and we're pulling out in I think 17 minutes. We'd only been there one night we hadn't like settled in like luckily so it wasn't like we had a ton of stuff to pack up but it was literally the fastest we have ever packed up the RV, pulled in the slides, unhooked from all of our utilities, hitched up to the truck and pulled out. It was record-breaking. It was impressive. Um, so we got our dogs, we got our RV, we were able to get back around and out through the West Yellowstone entrance and to our RV park. We were okay in the end. Uh, named escape is a little on the nose when you're literally being evacuated. Yeah, I'm just, I would rather have an RV named escape that helps me escape evacuations than having an RV named, um, what was it, citation? Citation, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, that seems like a good like, way. Okay, oh, Okay, alright. Will you guys just stop it even though it's not on the road? Oh no, it's right. Well, it's not on the road, is it? Keep going, guys. Close more bison. It's all closed up. Okay. No one's allowed in. We're out. Leaving Yellowstone National Park. But it was a wild ride. And the most like crazy part was we had no idea what was going on as it was going on, if that makes sense. Like we, it wasn't until we were settled in West Yellowstone that we saw the extent of the damage. Um, and we had, it was, it was wild. It was a crazy experience. Um, we were incredibly lucky overall. Um, but it's definitely a story. Like we have a story to tell about getting kicked out of Yellowstone. Um, we were safe. Most people were safe. Um, we heard, I heard one story of a woman who was having issues because she needed to get back into the park after having left for the day because her medications were in her hotel room in the park. Um, but other than that, like people were, people were doing fine. Um, but it was a crazy experience. <laughs> so, uh, I hope between this explanation and me cutting in all of our footage from that day. You kind of get a picture of what it was like for us. Everybody had a different experience, that's for sure. Um, it was wild, but we were all safe. We were all okay. Um, the weather was beautiful. The flooding was happening, but it wasn't raining or anything until it started to snow just as we pulled into our KOA in West, Ye in West Yellowstone. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed our version of the Yellowstone saga. Um, it definitely is one for the one for the books in the uh, Aspen Grove Adventures adventure book. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you want to know more about what we did the day after we left Yellowstone, you should watch next week. And then we headed up to Glacier after that. So you should subscribe if you want to see more of our summer vacation uh, adventures. And we will see you guys next time. Bye. Today.